Songs of Our Time, with the Abadet. I really mean it with all of my heart. Let me tell you a little about Vidya. And we will discover the person behind the choices that we know during the conversation. But for me, I have been following Vidya for a while. And for me, she embodies the quintessential Indian woman. Beautiful inside out herself inside out, a woman of conviction, a woman of self-belief. How does she be who she is? And in that is our collective learning. And so with all of you, I'm going to begin this beautiful evening with a beautiful Vidya Balan. With that, start with, can you hear me? Maybe I can have a little bit of more voice, yeah? To start with, I love your name. I think it's a very sacred name. And as children, uh, for those of you who are from abroad, uh, Vidya is a name every Indian child knows and has a very sacred relationship with it. So can you talk a little for our delegates from abroad, a little about what Vidya in Indian thought means and we have goddesses dedicated to it. Uh, firstly, good evening everyone and thank you Harbeen for that wonderfully generous introduction. Um, I'm going back with an inflated head for sure, maybe I'll need two seats. Uh, but uh, it feels great to be here and I know you all have had some very invigorating sessions so I do hope this is an entertaining one. Uh, you know, growing up, I didn't quite like my name, Vidya, because I thought it was very old-fashioned. Uh, every tangram, every second tangram girl was named Vidya. So I was like, you know, there's nothing unique about it. My sister was named Priya. I thought it had, you know, something to it, even though it was common. But I was like, Vidya is so bland. And I remember one, um, one time my principal in school, um, you know, I was doing some musti in class and she said, uh, please stand up, do you know what your name means? And I said, yeah, knowledge. She said, and I see you're completely devoid of it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I still remember that. I, at that time in school, I wasn't offended, I just felt like giggling. <laughs> and so I do even today. But, uh, yeah, I think it was much later that I began to appreciate the name that my parents had given me. Uh, have given me and uh, I just grew to like it. I think it has to do with one man I had a crush on telling me that, you know, Vidya is such an old world name and you've got an old world charm and suddenly the name became very cool. <laughs> so I think, uh, yeah, but uh, Vidya typically means knowledge and uh, knowledge of I guess knowledge just encompasses everything, knowledge about everything. Uh, does it mean the all-knowing? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> no, not kidding. <laughs> so your journey into films, it is quite a miraculous story of how from television you came to the city world. But it's always where you wanted to be. So you had this dream and you were pursuing it. Yet there were obstacles galore in your path. And there was self-doubt, and there was, I don't know how family responded. You went through a phase before you hit the right note with Parinita. Do you want to talk a little about that phase, a little about the self-doubt, uh, which all of us go through in the pursuit of our dreams, and yet persistence pays? So to go back a little with that inspiration, do you want to just touch a little upon that? I just want to say that self-doubt assails you throughout life is something that I've come to understand. Uh, I don't think you're 
able to extricate it from your being completely ever, and which is fine, you know. But knowing that um, you know everyone doubts themselves gives you some sort of assurance. Uh, but at that time, when I was going through my period of so-called struggle, uh, I just completed my BA from St. Xavier's College in Mumbai, and I was wanting to become an actor. I was doing ad films. Uh, I've done about 90 odd ad films. And, uh, you know, I remember Anurag Basu, uh, the director of films like Bars uh, Barfi, and now he's making a film called Jaga Jasus. He, he called me, he was doing some television work, and he said, you know, uh, I've got the lead role for you. Yeah. You know, you have to do this. You're going to rule television. And I turned around and I said, I don't want to do television, I want to do cinema because cinema is for posterity. And he said, Har koi Shahrukh Khan nahi banta. <laughs> and uh, he said it very sweetly, but I said, Haan, par koshish to karni uh, And that's, that's exactly what I was doing. I was just, I was just following my heart. My family, we, are, we come, come from a complete non-film background. So we had no idea of what struggle meant. We only went by uh, the, you know, perception of cinema being the big bad world where there are wolves waiting to eat you. Uh, so my parents were obviously worried. Uh, but you know, I just, I just kept telling them that this is all I want to do. Just one film, and I'll, I'll quit. <laughs> so, uh, but that one film was just now getting me. I got signed for a Malayalam film, which midway got shelved. So suddenly, I had one more film to do, because I had said one complete film, right? <laughs> and actually, though, though I'm laughing about it now, uh, there were a lot, there were about three incomplete films that I was part of. And then, because the word spread about this, I got labeled Jinx. So I got thrown out of a whole lot of films after that. And now my parents began to hope that I'd get that one film that would get completed. So I think it's just, you know, how parents want the best for their children. Uh, so they kept hoping and suddenly, you know, I was doing another ad film. I was doing a music video for uh, Euphoria, uh, the band. And when I met Pradeep Sarkar, who made Parinita with me later. And on the first day of the shoot, he said, Hey, Larki, there's a film banaunga. And I said, Kitne aaye, kitne gai, ye film banaunga. <laughs> <laughs> but, and we had shot through the night, you know, and it was grueling the first day itself. So I thought he was just saying that too, because he had another four days to go through. So I thought, I say, Kere man rakhne ke liye. But he actually kept up his promise. But before that, when we were preparing for this film, I got a Bengali film. And there was this insecurity in me that that one film was being very elusive. And therefore, if I was getting a film, I should do it. Of course, it, it was a lovely script and it was a first time director. And I was committed to doing my first film, Parinita with Dada. But I actually, I told him, I said, you have to let me do this. You have to let me do this Bengali film because aap film mere saath banana cha rahe hai, par producer nahi hai, vagera, vagera. I just meant, you know, at that point I was being dramatic. I said, uh, when I'm old, I want to know that I was part of one film, complete film at least. And I think I emotionally blackmailed him and he said, okay, go ahead, do the film. I did the film and I got a Best Actress Award with that very first film. So suddenly, anyway, I was feeling better because Dada was showing faith in me and then, you know, the Bengali film happened. So things had begun to look better. But I think the only two things that have always held me together, they still do, are family and my faith. I'm someone who prays a lot and that I get from my family. I'm irreligious. I, I don't pray to any particular God. But uh, I pray to that supreme power, to that supreme being, that energy, or whatever we like to call it. Uh, <coughs> and I'm an eternal optimist, so I know that when, if the sun goes down, it has to come up. 
So I keep waiting until the sun rises. And if it has to... <laughs> Sorry, I tend to talk a lot, Harbin. You can ask me one question and I can go on for the entire That's evening. the good point. That's the good point. So, I think you're Destiny's child. You, Parinita, uh, suddenly everybody took notice of the powerhouse of an actor that you are. There's an electricity on the screen that I find when you are there. Actually, don't look out for the main actors there. I look at you. And there's a, there's a, I love you for that. <laughs> and there is, well, you've carried movies on your shoulders. Just you, without a male lead. That's the first one, really. She has changed the narrative in Indian cinema. There are actually now movies made for women in the lead roles and the word leading lady actually means the leading lady now. It's not just the woman with the hero. Yeah? And that's because of Vidya. Uh, because Vidya chose certain roles and she came to choosing those, those roles because of destiny as I was saying. There were moments and we'll talk about that now uh, there are movies like Kahani, where we see the Vidya as we know today and the Vidya that we know we will continue to see in the future. And then there is Vidya in certain other movies where you sort of try to... I can name them for you. Yes, <laughs> where uh, people probably told you that, okay, uh, that's enough. This role of conviction and courage is good enough for one movie, but that's not what the norm in uh, the film industry is. And you have to conform, and you have to do the thing that everybody does. You've got to work through the formula, and uh, you've got to have the blow dry hair, the size zero figure, and the you know the the, the clothes for dance or whatever. And uh, how did that confuse you? And how did that take you into from your conviction to confusion, and then? Big confusion and back to clarity and back to conviction. And what was that process? Oh my god, I never thought about it like this, but you've actually broken it down so well. I, I do think that I came into the industry being a very self-assured girl, like I told you. Uh, I didn't think I was lacking in anything. I, I thought I was the best actress ever born. Uh, <laughs> really. And then, and Parinita kind of convinced me that I was right. You know, everyone was praising me and I was receiving a whole lot of Best Debut Awards and for someone who wanted just one complete film, it was a big deal. Um, the honeymoon period continued for a few more films and then slowly but surely the criticism began to happen and I wasn't used to it. I had thought that everyone was in love with me forever. Uh, <laughs> does that sound like marriage? <laughs> no, but I... I um, I, I suddenly I began to get criticized and they reached, they came a stage where, um, you know, everything I did or didn't do was being criticized. So I was completely confused. Of course, there was a whole lot about the clothes um, I was wearing, about how, you know, uh, what body size I was. It was uh, all being discussed on national television daily and, um, you know, I used to, of course, sarcastically tell myself that, well, you're so important that these things are being discussed on national television. But deep down, this girl who was, you know, I've always been, um, I, I was a fat child. So, but I never looked at myself as anything but beautiful because that's how at home, you know, even within my um, extended family or friends or whatever, they, no one ever told me, you know, you, no one criticized me. Sometimes they would tease me, but there was never criticism for it. And suddenly, therefore, I was questioning my very being, you know, my... And you've just become an actress, you, you're being called sexy, and you're being called desirable, and there are... You're getting attention from so many people, and suddenly, you feel like every... All of that is being taken back. The only thing, thankfully, that people didn't find fault with were my performances. So, at that stage when, you know, my pairing with a certain actor or my choices of films or my clothes or my way, everything was being discussed right there. Um, I spent a lot of time at home with my family. 
I think um, more than ever, I've always been a very family-oriented person, but I think more than ever I began to, there, there came in a transparency into uh, the relationship with my parents where I began to express and share with them exactly how I was feeling. My sister and brother-in-law are very strong influences in my life too. And I would just keep telling them all that I was going through and um, some in substance of what they said to me was like, you know, um, talent can't be hired. You can hire stylists, you can hire physical trainers, you can hire a good nutritionist. So no one is questioning your talent, so you should be, you're in a very good space. And what are you here to do? Act. So go ahead and act. Everything else can be taken care of from the outside. And suddenly that made a lot of sense, you know. It took a lot of uh, introspection, like I said, and I went back to wearing what I liked wearing the most, which is a sari. Because when I came into the industry, people told me that, you know, you can't be wearing a sari, you're so young. What are people going to think, you know, that you're traditional or you're conservative or... It's just older to wear a sari. So I had begun to get influenced by all these things that were being told to me. And, uh, but, but when I was going through this time of um, self-talk, um, I somehow told myself that, you know, I can never make each one of you in the room happy. Someone, at some point, will find some fault with me. And which is only fair where there is more than one person in a room that is bound to happen, there are bound to be differences. So, how do I make sure that there is one person on one, my side always. I said that I can't make sure anyone but me is on my side always. And that's what I decided to do. So, so whatever happens, I look at myself in the mirror and I say, how can this get any better instead of saying, how can it get any worse? So I think that's, that's what it is. So, again, I'll come to the moment of the self-belief when it developed. And you had these fantastic movies, you know. For the dirty picture, I must tell you, you know, in a world where competition is so high, like Vidya said, she decided to focus on her talent and then rest everything had to follow according to the story. So one movie, The Dirty Picture, which was made on the story of a real actress from the South who became in her times the big sex symbol, which was a huge disruption, uh, you know, at that time, in the cinema of that time. Uh, so Vidya was playing the role of uh, this actress and she actually put on like 12 kilos for that, which wasn't difficult at all for me. <laughs> Not for me. So a lot of yeah, a lot was made of it, and I'd say, yeah, I had to eat a lot, but I was kidding. <laughs> and then Ishkia, I think yeah, Ishkia, Ishkia before. before. So I'm just going on those movies yeah, where we see the new the new yeah, Vidya, yeah, which yeah. who had conviction and who was picking scripts, or directors were writing those scripts seeing that new focus on talent, maybe you can tell us a bit about that, but Ishkia we saw a no makeup look, which was uh, absolutely something, I don't know how much courage that took again to go on screen without makeup. So can you talk a little about the choices and the belief systems that have been developing along with your rising self-confidence in and your rising belief in your own talent and showing the talent above everything else. Everything else comes, uh, but the talent is foregrounded. So what kind of beliefs uh, have been uh, developing in you which have resulted in those kind of choices that we see outwardly? Okay, going without makeup, you know, you're okay with it. But you must be developing some sort of belief system about what it means to be a human being, what it means to be a woman, and what it means to be an actor. Because from now on, your choices will be determined by your beliefs, like you very beautifully put in that interview that I was just privy to. My work is an extension of my beliefs. So what are those new beliefs 
uh, that you have developed in this beautiful journey of going through, uh, you know, this whole phase. So, what has, what is the understanding that you have arrived at as a human being, as a woman, and as an actor? Uh, you know, I think the beliefs did not develop over time while we learn and grow. Uh, every single day and on a film set, the growth, I think, and the learning is that much more accelerated um, because you're living two parallel realities at the same time. I do think that the beliefs were there. At that time, I somehow developed the courage to follow my beliefs. So uh, my choices were reflective of my beliefs. I think, and what were those beliefs? That an actor is someone, primarily, I think this is what um, I like that, that you know, an actor is someone who lives different people's lives on screen and no two people are the same. So whatever that difference means, sometimes it's in a mannerism, sometimes it's in the physicality of a character, sometimes it's in the voice. So whatever it takes to bring about that difference, I will do. So sometimes it's no makeup, sometimes it's putting on weight. Those really are... Um, things that, you know, the script drives you. But those characters were written, probably keeping an actor like you in mind. Um, a lot of times I was told that, but you know, everyone didn't see that. So you know. <laughs> Not really, because those are new kind of roles, very uh, strong female protagonist roles. So, uh, you know, they must be knowing this about you to have kind of no, I, I like, as much as I'd like to believe that, I do think that, you know, Ishkia, for example, was a script that had been written before, but had been put on the back burner, apparently. And then, um, I don't know, I, I hadn't even done any work for them to come to me with this film, but suddenly they came to me, they had gone to a few other actresses with the film, I believe, but when they came to me, I grabbed it with both hands, because what I found extremely interesting was that, this woman who, from the appearance, she seems like a simple, you said, no makeup look, you know, um, one, she was oozing sexuality, she was unapologetic about it, and secondly, therefore, she was, ex not therefore, secondly, she was extremely manipulative, and you couldn't smell it. You know, I think that was very exciting for me, because normally when you see a femme fatale, you s imagine the person to be, we have stereotypes, so Western, cigarette in hand, maybe uh, alcohol in the other. I don't know, there are stereotypes that we adhere to, but this was really breaking down the stereotypes. So I found that, and it was, I think because there are all kinds of people. So does that excite you, breaking down the stereotype? Yeah. Is it something that challenges you, it attracts does. you, and, and draws out uh, something within you that you, know, I, I think you love so. to discover? I think as a person, as a woman, you see different kinds of people around you all the time. I know that there are people like the woman I played in Ishkia, whose name was Krishna. I know there are people like that. I know there are people like, you know, different kinds of characters I've played. And that's what I think, I may not know them personally, but just knowing that there are different kinds of people, and that's where I think my sociology background helps me to, uh, to believe in the possibility of possibilities. You know, to believe that this is possible, but this is also possible. So this may not be true in my part of the world or in my world, but maybe that's true in your world. I think that's what spurs me as an actor. What about the the environment that you're in? Uh, evidently, it's a different environment, right? And you stand out as somebody who's unique, who's unconventional in her choices who's who she is, who is her own person, and for whom there's a very thin line between the actor and the person. This sort of... That's very where the actor in me comes in. Yeah, that's <laughs> making very, you feel like there's no difference. <laughs> it's very continuous. But, but, no, no, I'm kidding. Yeah, sure. But, you know, the environment that you are, what do you feel about the environment? Uh, you're a very deep person. There's, there's an honesty in you. You, you're searching for honesty, you're striving to live with that integrity of being one person. But is that so in the fraternity? You hear all sorts of things about the industry as such. Do you find people like you, do you have friends in the industry who resonate with your kind of being? Or do you think it's a different world and you've got a little 
oasis is in the middle of the desert and uh, that that's who you are how do you feel about it? you know finally uh, the industry is part of society so they are the same people that are inhabiting the industry so the, uh, it's just that insecurities ride really high within the industry and we are less able to conceal it i think they, it gets written about it gets captured on camera so that really is a difference but i think there are all kinds of people there are uh, you know there are misconceptions uh, or perceptions about actresses not having an opinion not being well read not being articulate and i think i've seen all of that change um i i think a lot of times actresses are expected to dumb themselves down you know to fit into uh, the system it's convenient for everyone to let the status quo uh continue but you know uh, the truth is that um i i'm as much as you know it's flattering for me to say you're an exception there are i think each one of us who's an exception who has actually gone ahead and done something uh different or or uh, what's mine so obviously you've now figured out what kind of movies you want to do the kind of self belief and belief systems that you have that informs the kind of scripts that you choose the roles that you pick and not just that in the causes that you espouse for instance you are the brand ambassador for this whole sanitation movement uh in in the villages and like we were talking about uh, about india in the morning that a lot of people and women uh there are they have no access to toilets and they have to go out and defecate in the open in the fields so uh, vidya is a brand ambassador for sanitation and also uh espouses the cause uh, there is a beautiful ad advertisement that she does and i must share this with you it's happened uh, very recently so she does an advertisement where she's seen uh, telling a village girl that uh, you know you have to ask your in-laws whether they have a toilet in their houses or not and if they don't have it well refuse to get married and you know ask for it it's your right to ask for a toilet in the house where you are going to get married and so there's a whole narrative uh, you know story to it and recently a couple of days back there's actually a girl in a village who inspired by what vidya says on that advertisement has actually called off a marriage because she asked the groom i mean she she figured out that they didn't have a toilet so she said no to the marriage so you did about at least about 100 advertisements before at the start of your career those were perhaps the entertainment 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 matrix they were like okay there's a product whatever it is that's fine <laughs> so you know soap oil whatever but now as i said because of a highly developed and a vocal uh, uh, you know crystallized belief system it informs your choices and you take up things that have a meaning uh, also you might be doing other things but you you know go towards things and you see this sort of social change happening because of that What do you think is the next step for Vidya? We know in the movies you will continue to do movies uh, that that you know call out the actor in you and and the unconventional Vidya, and we we'll continue to see that. But do we also see a reinvention of Vidya as an agent of change in society? And does that does that role does that double role inspire you? And do you want to do more of it? And do we see that happening? a lot more of in the future not just on television but maybe at the grassroots in real life as well uh you know i think i'm an actor first and my focus will always be that that also gives me the reach so that i can give people a message so therefore i was in garhwal doing a trek last weekend and uh, i was walking up there was just this couple walking down from uh, the mountain and suddenly uh, they go a little like and they stop and they say aap shot aane wale the gap on mein hai na and i said are ba you know they don't recognize me from my films but they recognize me from that campaign and that is really uh that that was very satisfying and fulfilling and an entire conversation started about this um swachh bharat abhiyan where they said that you know hum sabko lagta hai ki jitna hum kar sake agar 
कचरा कहीं पड़ा हुआ है तो हम उठा लेते हैं बैग में डाल लेते हैं कचरे के डब्बे में जाके फेंकते हैं सो देर वॉज अन्स ऑफ पार्टिसिपेशन ऑन पार्ट ऑफ ऑल ऑफ देम एंड देवर सेम दैट यू नो ऑफ कोर्स दे हैव एक्सेस टू टॉयलेट्स बट देवर टॉकिंग अबाउट हाउ दिस मैसेज इज स्लोली स्प्रेडिंग इवन इन टू एरियाज वेर नॉट स्लोली एक्चुअली द कैंपेन इज बींग really um has been very effective also because it's bombarding the media so people are constantly uh exposed to this and they, that is going to cause uh, a change of mindset it will take time but i think we're headed in the right direction so it's very satisfying when people say that and uh, therefore i know that i contradicted myself i i told you that they recognize me from the app but i think more or less the reach I I will be able to leverage, yeah, if I am the actor, and that is what I actually live for. If therefore that gives me the opportunity to do something more meaningful and larger, it's great. Sanitation is something I feel very strongly about. And you heard me. I was uh, telling someone that I was in Banaras. I, I go to Banaras once a year to a little village, uh, to different villages and. to two to and a half hours from banaras actually where uh, we started this education campaign uh, which is called chote kadam pragati ki or uh, and you know on one of my first visits there we reached the village i finished my duties and we were on the way back and i said this i need to use the loo and uh, they said yahan to kuch nahi hai to i said kuch nahi hai matlab kahi to bathroom hogi na so they said नहीं नहीं आप खेत में चले जाइए ऐसे खेत में यू नो योर शॉक बिकॉज वी ऑल हैव अ सर्टेन परसेप्शन ऑफ डेवलपमेंट एंड प्रोग्रेस बीइंग वेरी होलिस्टिक एंड वी थिंक दैट सीइंग द दोस बिल्डिंग्स अराउंड अस एंड सीइंग द मेट्रोस एंड सीइंग ऑल ऑफ दैट इज योर रियलिटी आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट 5 इयर्स अगो एंड आई दैट वाज रियली शॉकिंग फॉर मी आई सेड नहीं मैं थोड़ी देर बाद कहां कहां पे शौच आ रहे हैं सो दे सेड अभी बनारस पहुंचने तक कुछ नहीं है सो आई सर ओके देन आई हैव टू एक्चुअली यूज द फील्ड्स एंड यू नो आई कैप थिंकिंग ऑफ आई कैप थिंकिंग ऑफ कंटैमिनेटिंग द फील्ड्स आई कैप आई वाज वर्रीड अबाउट पीपल हु वुड गेट अ स्नेक पीक एंड इट वाज इट वाज एम्बेरसिंग इट वाज इन अ वे आई आई फेल्ट लाइक इट वाज अ लॉस ऑफ डिग्निटी एंड इफ आई फेल्ट दैट इन वन इंस्टेंस I keep thinking of those people who have to do it, women who have to go before sunrise to, you know, um, for <laughs> whatever they need to do um, to the fields before anyone wakes up. That and and at around that time was when uh, Mr. Jairam Ramesh asked me if I'd be brand ambassador for sanitation, and I said, "What does it entail?" And he said. this is what it does and i was more than happy to do it and what's fantastic is that those ads were being shown and all of that then the swachh bharat abhiyan started and suddenly the entire country is singing the anthem of swachh bharat so you know i think um i can't take credit for it in any way but i think we're just ready we were on the brink of it and it's happened but i was there at the right place at the right time that's destiny yeah, yeah i guess so we've been talking about a uh, range of issues about women the women economic forum and one of the issues that we've been really talking is about the mindset uh, in india abroad uh, concerning a woman so if you're a woman and if you're sitting in the boardroom uh, you know saying something uh, probably uh, there's a little silent misogyny you will be told okay okay you can be silent you know maybe not th those kind of words but saying okay okay we'll take that point later um, if a woman driver is on the street oh god you know it has to be a woman driver because she took the wrong turn or gave the wrong indicator this stereotypes in in the mind mm -hmm. about women which shows a certain mindset about women Uh, we also come from a culture that also values feminine energy very highly at the same time we see this little contradiction in daily in society uh, what do you think can be done to sort of correct this imbalance or address this imbalance given the fact that uh, in our regular movies i'm not talking about the ones that you do 
uh, which are again stories, but there is nothing done to sort of address this aspect. On the contrary, there is a little uh, chauvinism there, there's a little patriarchy there, and women play sort of two-dimensional roles, and uh, things are done to sort of create the idea that you can play with the woman, it's okay. If she says no, it doesn't really mean no. Uh, and you see, uh, uh, I'm not blaming Bollywood for it, no way. There is, uh, you know, I'm not blaming our cinema, I love our cinema, I love our movies, I love our music, everything about that. But, you know, since you are from that world, and, uh, you know, and we see a sort of, you know, that, that sort of a mindset problem in the streets where there's something like Eve teasing, uh, you're any, a girl is walking on the street and somebody will just come and grope her thinking she's public property or private property or whatever, uh, she can't, uh, you know, it's, it's 8 o'clock, she's at night, uh, and everybody will blame her if, if she gets touched or molested or raped and say, why were you out at 8 o'clock at night, it's silly of you, you asked for it. You know, there are all these kind of mindsets which are not uh, uh, really, a, you know, kind of working towards even, uh, recognizing the woman as a subject, as an entity, who has a right to her own body, who has a right to her own life, who has a right to her own choices. So, being in India, you'll, you know, you'll, you'll get all of that. What do you think, I don't know, we've been looking for answers here. What do you think women can do themselves to elicit a change in the mindset? Of course, one woman at a time, I guess. And then the collective self as we have, with women connected from all over the world, being there for each other, at least getting the respect and love from each other, that's a good start. Uh, but what do you think can really begin to happen for this change in mindset to occur at the larger society level? I think that's, that change in mindset uh, does not happen overnight. It happens over time and that that is therefore you know, manifesting at this point more than before, but, and I think as we go, go on, you'll see more and more women who become aware of the fact that they have the first right to themselves. Um, they have the right to their bodies, their minds, their choices, their <sighs> everything, you know. Um, so, I really think it's, of course, it has to be a multi-pronged approach, and I'm not the first one to say it. But it is going to take, we're dealing with, you know, not decades, centuries of conditioning, where the woman, not just the man, has been taught that the woman is your property, the woman also believes she is the man's property. So, you know, as much as we are educated and evolved, somewhere you believe that the man, at one point your father, or your brother, at another point your husband, and then your son, or your male boss. Someone or the other has, has that right over you. Therefore, um, intentionally, unintentionally, you give up um, control over yourself in the hands of men. So I don't think it's just men. We women are also perpetuating that. And that, like, um, I find it most amazing when, you know, uh, women wear, puff, powerful women wear slightly plunging necklines and then there are other women who snigger and say, no wonder she's gotten to the top. You know, so, so you are taking away, she chooses wear what she does, but you cannot take away from her ability, but that's because we are constantly threatened for how the men are going to perceive us, and we want to earn favor with the men in our lives at every point. So, uh, because we derive our identity from them, we derive our identity either from the people we are related to or through association. So I think because we are vying for that attention, that male attention, because that's where the identity comes from, it, we are constantly insecure even with each other. So when you talk about a sisterhood, here it might be, might be easier for us to acknowledge that because we are a little more educated and we believe we are evolved. But for, um, you know, a lot of women who are not going out, who are not financially dependent, who are dependent on the men in their lives. Um, I think how the men in the house 
perceive you and therefore that sars for whose stories which have been going on forever and again all that comes from a certain need to be relevant to the men in your lives i think that's conditioning that's going to take forever to break down but i guess we are all aware there's awareness and you know not just through education but i'm not a social media fan but i will admit that i i feel that today social media has um, and the internet actually has really um, reached where most people haven't been able to the nooks and crannies and um, slowly people are becoming aware of a world different from their own a world where it is possible for you to just be who you are and to have respect and to live your life the way you want to so i think um the change is underway and it will be for a while before it's an equal world no if that's possible oh, yes. maybe it will be uh um, maybe then the the other you know the reverse <laughs> struggle will begin <laughs> uh, that was a a very very insightful and a sensitive view of the whole thing and very perceptive so i think that's that's really a new way to look at it you got married right and in the industry you have this thing the moment the actress gets married her career is finished she's not going to get films she's not going to be asked but has it happened for you again you know you're you're reversing every bit of the formula every time so why is it different for you no i think it it has been actually if you look at yes the actresses from nutan to sharmila to god to there have been a lot of actresses who who were married and had very successful careers something changed in between of course but now again we had kajol um you know someone who's done films even after she got married aishwarya is doing a film now karina is still working i'm working so i think the, the again the thing is that we uh, i will admit that my past three films have not worked and that thought did cross my mind i said has marriage impacted because it's conditioning that i'm also uh, dealing with and i said you know is it really that maybe it's just it took me some time to think that there was something in those films that did not resonate with audiences and you know i did not need to personalize it something that women do very easily all the time we like to take all the blame never the credit <laughs> but uh, i think i i i think it's to do with whether it's a good film or not and a good film works period and sometimes um, you know there are various there are variables there are multiple variables that contribute to a film film success so i have i'm very hopeful that hamari adhuri kahani will prove that married actresses work in the box Do office you should know a little about that story on that note it's a very interesting story and which borders you know which is about being woman and uh, having to deal with choices and about the reality of married life and the reality of power equations in marriage you want to talk a little about you know it, it's actually what i i just spoke about it's about a marriage where this man thinks his wife is his property he he doesn't treat her like a human being at all she is just his wife and beyond that there is she has no identity or reason to be i think at some point she she begins to she doesn't even know she has a choice out of that she's a very traditional woman and but she meets this man who makes her realize that the, inside her there is this person who's alive there is this woman and suddenly she begins to realize that yeah you know I, i'm not just his wife i'm also a person i think and therefore it's not your uh, typical extramarital affair story it is a film about a uh, film which says love is about love is love when it liberates not when it possesses so um, but it is primarily a love story this i think would be the large take away yeah 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 okay so we got to take a few questions from the audience here who has a question rita from from kuwait hi <laughs> you know uh, i'm someone who fluctuates very easily 
I keep getting told, oh my God, you've lost so much weight. You're looking lovely. You put on weight, na? <laughs> All the time, every time I step out and I find it, you know, I, I, I've begun to switch off when someone talks about my weight or my body. For me, um, for me, because really I am, um, yes, I did lose those 12 kgs, but the point is that um, whether or not it was around a film, my weight has always been the subject of discussion. So I just get very tired. Um, maybe it's just time I began to throw my weight around. <laughs> maybe I don't do it enough. Uh, but weight or no weight, I've come to love my body just the way it is. Thank you. I meant excess weight or no excess weight, not weight or no weight. Yes, yes, uh, that's Shalini Piraman. Hi, Vidya. Hi. I wanted to ask you, you've done different kinds of roles and very serious roles also. Is there any one particular dream role that you're yet waiting for which hasn't come your way? <sighs> not really, you know. Um, as in, I, I've never had, I, I've never thought that, oh my god, I hope I get to play a character like this. And I've always been surprised, therefore, when someone came to me with an Ishkia or a No One Kill Jessica or a dirty picture. It's, it's different every time. Um, so I think the writers have great imaginations and uh, they, they work better than my dreams do. <laughs> so I'm just going to leave it to them and hope they surprise me time and again. So you're satisfied, fully accomplished? I, I think uh, fully accomplished, I wouldn't say. There's a lifetime ahead for accomplishment. Um, but yes, I've definitely done more than I set out to. I think the universe is kind. All the best. Thank you. Uh, yes, that is uh, Divalia. Her name is named after Diwali. So oh, her name wow. is Divalia. She's from France and she lives in Los Angeles. She has an incredible story. She was she jumped off a cliff, jumped off because she wanted to fly, and she met, couldn't fly. And then she was actually paralyzed for three years. And then she's here with us right now and traveling all over the world, bearing testimony to the fact that miracles happen. Wow. Well, thank you, but it was not about me. I just <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. I just wanted to say, I've never heard of you before. I live in Hollywood. You're so, not only beautiful, but you're so amazing. I, I really feel overwhelmed and you touch my heart. Like, you're just wonderful. Thank so you. I was wondering, why you don't mean, do you get offers from Hollywood? Why don't we know you in Hollywood? <laughs> um, you know George Clooney wanted to marry me? <laughs> Um, no, I haven't got any offers from Hollywood, very honestly. Uh, and I'm very happy with the work I'm doing here, but I am a greedy actor. If there are good offers, I'm willing to go anywhere in the world. Uh, but I, I don't know why there haven't been any offers yet. <laughs> okay, so we need to change that. So we started already with the social media. I'm sure that my publicist, Denise O'Brien, also, also started to tweet. And Yes. Oh! Hi. <laughs> so we are already tweeting about you, Facebooking, all oh, oh, of yes. Thank you, thank you. And you're my best friend from today. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Where's the question? Yes. That is K. Rigger from Manila, Philippines. Hi. Um, good Hi. evening. Good evening. Good evening. Um, this is all about, this is women economic forum, this is basically about women. Um, I haven't heard it um, during the last sessions, but I want to ask now, very passionate question, but to you, how do you define a real woman? Wow. <laughs> I probably give my own definition later, but I want to hear your first one. No, I think... Um, a real woman? Yeah, for you. A real woman is one uh, 
who realizes that she has the power to create and to change like no one else. Wow. Wow. And that's, I don't mean by create just procreate, but just create. A question? Uh, Ma'am, I'm uh, Joe Vito Dumello. I represent uh, the media here in Goa. Hi. Uh, good evening, ma'am. Uh, I would like to ask you, a lot of the conversation today has been about the beauty of actresses, right? The external beauty. But what you present for us here is not only beauty, but I think so, a wonderful personality. I mean, Thank you. the things that you tell us through this conversation and uh, the way you portray uh, roles in films, I mean, there's a lot more depth that goes into it. And I don't know. I see a lot of lyrics like to... in there. <laughs> Wonderful. I know you're inspired. Yes, I, I don't know. I, can, I just say I'd like to congratulate you. And if there is anything that you could tell us, what is the source to keep such a happy, public personality? Oh, that's Thank a good you. question. That's a good question. Thank you. Um, firstly, I think, you know, beauty is as beauty does. So, I've never really uh, focused too much on, I don't know, I, uh, I don't necessarily appreciate just um, the standards of, the ideal standards of beauty that are prescribed. I've been I think I've been just, uh, yeah, no, and you see people around me. I've grown up watching people, uh, seeing people around me all my life who were absolutely, which is, you know, no makeup, but they sparkled, you know, they didn't pay that much attention to their appearance. Today, there's too much focus on appearance. Just, not just how you're turned out, what you say, how you say it. We're all constantly on tender hooks. But again, like I was telling you that many years ago, you know, um, I just liberated myself from that. I said, I can't make sure that everyone is going to like me and forever. So let me just be myself and let me be my biggest, you know, um, I don't know what you call it, source, fan, supporter, um, strength. And, and that's how it's been. Not that I don't flounder, not that I don't, you know, I do go through a lot of self-doubt, but I think now, with experiences that that period of time that I take to bounce back is reduced. But I think it's just an I am an eternal optimist, like I said, and that's what makes me smile. When I see when someone smiles at me, I feel like everything in the world is okay. And when someone's not nice, I also am very sensitive. I I just feel like saying, what is your problem? Why can't you just smile? You know? <laughs> but um, yeah, I think it's just that the source is that faith that the world is a good place. And I don't mean it to mean to sound poetic or anything of that sort, but genuinely, I believe there's a lot of good and it's for all of us to share in. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, that is uh, Mr. Vijayanayak, uh, editor of Sakal from, from Delhi. Uh, just, I want to ask you about the role which is being played by the actors who have become politicians and they are presenting Bollywood in the parliament. What do you think about them? <laughs> uh, I think, you know, at one point films used to be the haven for people who tried many other things and succeeded and still wanted to try their hand at films and sometimes they not succeeded at other places and, but you, films was something that everyone wanted to try and today I think politics everyone wants to give a shot at because but I think uh, therefore you have a lot of actors uh, some of them have been effective politicians so great more power we need people from all walks of life but we need true blue politicians also and people who've been in the services and people who understand all that better, you know. It's, uh, politics is not only about the vote bank. Is that No. <laughs> I, I, like I said, you know, for, never, never say never, but I, I don't under, I don't think I'd be able to contribute effectively, honestly. And with commitment, I, I doubt it. I'm a big self-involved, I'm an actor. <laughs> uh, yes, I'd say. 
so many hands, how do I choose? Uh, Rahul Nanvekar, uh, the CEO of Indian Roots, our e-commerce portal with NDTV, which is promoting uh, crafts heritage and also new designs. First question, yeah. Uh, yeah. You are a you are from a Tigal Ram Ram family, yeah. right? And today's Mother's Day. Yeah. How tough was it to convince your mom to be you want to be an actress, right? Yeah. So oh, tell us something about your mother and how tough was the conversation when you said I want to be an actress in Bollywood. Uh, are you done? You're not. No, you're not. You're not. not. Okay. okay. Um, my mother actually said, uh, you know, what is all this? You know, who's? What have you been reading? Who have you been watching? Who? No South Indian girl ever becomes an actor. And I said, Hema Mani is South Indian. <laughs> and I said, she's the biggest. She said, no, no, but from our family, education is the only thing. And you know, if your grandfather was alive, he would have just beaten you to pulp. <laughs> so I said, you know, but my father's very soft. She knew that he would never do that. And uh, she, like I said, so there was initially, there was shock. There was shock that some, some a profession that none of us had ever thought of entering was, um, I, I was desirous of entering that profession. I was wanting to be an actor. And there's, every South Indian is trained in music and dance, but not in drama. You know, music and dance, the association has always been, uh, it's a part of our culture, but drama or acting is not given that darja. So, I understood where she was coming from, but having said that, over time, I think initially she would accompany me to shoots because she didn't know how it would be for me, whether someone would make a pass at me or what, but I remember she accompanied me on every single day of shoot on my first television uh, serial and she realized that there were lots of people like me or from backgrounds like I come from so um, and she realized that I was capable of taking care of myself and she stopped coming with me on set and at some point like I told you she she was praying that that film that elusive film happens so I think initially she was very very averse to it but then today she she's she appreciates or rather, she's very proud of my work. Kiranji, I will second request you. You are with us. Please ask a question. <laughs> oh my god. I'm actually nervous. <laughs> Vidya, how did marriage, did marriage strengthen you? Did marriage uh, change you? Or... Uh, in any way, tell us how has marriage impacted you in any way, or okay. how did you reach out? How did you handle it? Uh, how have you balanced it? Um, you know, I keep asking myself the same question, Kiranji, because um, I I haven't seen myself getting married ever, and then I met Siddharth, who I'm now married to, and suddenly we started seeing each other, and this seemed like the natural progression. I could. I could imagine spending the rest of my life with him. Also because, like I said, he he um, has been brought up to believe that marriage is, uh, you know, and I'm saying he particularly because um, I was I was not sure whether I wanted to get married before I met him, but I realized that here was a man who saw marriage as coming together of equals, of two people, of partners, just like I did. So. I was happy to get married and touch wood, it's been great. I will say that uh, life does change after marriage. Uh, I, I can't really quantify or qualify exactly how things change, but I think initially, I remember after I got married, I wanted to take a break for a bit. I was going through some health issues, but I killed myself um, to continue to work despite my terrible health, because I felt like, what will people say now? You know, as women, we also, as, as professionals, uh, we don't want to be seen as compromising on any of those. So, I kept telling myself, no, no, people will think that now I'm slowing down because I've gotten married, that I'm not as interested because I've gotten married. So, I have to keep at it. And I kept at it, and at the same time, I was trying to do everything at home, and, Siddharth told me, he said, you know, uh, suddenly why have you become this other person? 
you were, you know, you've never been, uh, you, you don't have to be a homemaker. You and I can equally distribute things between each other and I'm so grateful to him for that because like I said, I'm also, um, there is the conditioning in me also even if I want to wish it away. So somewhere I was trying to be this perfect um, professional and wife. I think what's happened after two years of marriage, what began to happen is I let go. I said, let me just do what makes me happy. In the time that I'm free, if I want to, you know, um, take complete charge of the house, I'll do that. In the time that I'm passionately involved in the film, I'm not going to be involved at home, and that's also absolutely okay. So, uh, I think that's the big realization that has happened, that you don't have to be perfect. You know, somewhere I think we, we put this pressure on ourselves, and I did for a while, but now I've, I'm, I've let go of that pressure. I, I think you, you, um, you've said it just right. It's being all. It's being this and that, and that, and you're trying, you know, um, to keep to to be there for your family, and you're trying to be the professional, and you're trying trying to be there as a homemaker and as the wife, and as somewhere again, I felt a little lost, you know, um, and then thankfully. I think again conversations with my loved ones has just helped me ease up. I think I've become an easier person. I don't carry any burden on my shoulders anymore. Thank you. Yes, Samya? Rashmi. Rashmi is a part of a, an all-women all expedition by road from Delhi to London. Wow! Thank you. Thank you for that. Good luck for that. Thank you so much and good evening. Um, Vidhar, you come across as such a happy and positive person. But you've also done some really uh, dark and intense roles. So how difficult or easy is it to switch that off at the end of the day? Uh, it wasn't easy before. It would actually take a toll on my health. Like I said, you know, um, at the time that I got married, I had just come out of two intense films, The Dirty Picture and Kahani. And I felt like I needed a break. In Hollywood, actually, they go through detox programs after they've done intense films. We have nothing like that here. So, uh, you know, I should have ideally taken a break at that time and just I would, have, I would have had more health issues then. So, it does take a toll. Finally, you're playing with emotions, you know. You're, you're pushing yourself to feel things that you probably don't feel on a particular day or at that particular time. So, it is... It is uh, Sometimes very, very tough and it leaves you feeling drained. Um, but uh, I think Hamari Adhuri Kahani is an extremely intense love story, like you must have seen in the trailer. But you know, this is the one film I think I also, it's been a coming of age in some way for me because I just didn't come out feeling drained, and this is a first. I came out feeling I have a good day of shoot and then I completely switch off. I think I've learned to do that over time. It's taken me 10 years. I complete 10 years in June. But um, it does take a toll and you have to have your, you know, you have to know how to unwind, which you learn only over time. So what helps you to switch off? That's interesting. What helps you? What's your tool to switch off? You know, uh, music. Um, sitting and watching the waves. I, I, I live on Juhu Beach in Bombay. So just sitting and watching the waves sometimes, sometimes just doing absolutely nothing. I also write my diary. So the diary helps me when sometimes. And uh, my niece and nephew, I have a twin niece and nephew, my sister's kids, a boy and a girl. And actually even if I just speak to them on the phone, I realize that Suddenly something changes, you know, I think children have that uh, ability. So I think all these things, and of course chatting, I, I choose Siddharth's brains. I have to tell him exactly what happened in the day and all of that. Once I get it out of my system, then I think I'm able to unwind. And at the end of the day, I always pray.
and has your have your prayers changed in their in their vibration in their energy maybe earlier you asked for uh, maybe a movie yeah. god get me that one movie and now do you, do you think your relationship with god with your own spirituality has also sort of been affected by that just let go it's okay just be with me or some sort of a qualitative change in the, in your relationship with the force yeah i think that just constantly goes through you know ups and downs it's uh, sometimes you feel that you know the meaning of surrender and then suddenly you're surprised because you when you feel you know how to surrender something shows you that you haven't completely been able to do that so i think that's a constant process of yeah it's uh, i don't know really i just pray sometimes i pray more sometimes i pray less sometimes i don't pray at all <laughs> so i think it's just i i, I go with how i'm feeling So what are you going to write in your diary tonight? <laughs> that I had the most fabulous session here. Okay. No, okay. genuinely, I've had a lovely time. And thank you all. <laughs> the energy is great. I mean, we have a little surprise for all of us here. So yeah. I will call upon uh, Mansi Mahajan. as a taboo breaker and exceptionally talented indian actress you are an epitome of feminine power who represents quint essential womanhood in the indian film industry you uphold a charismatic persona and depict strong inspiring realistic women characters in your most laudable ways by your spectacular and powerful performances you have carved a distinct place for female roles and given stature to women oriented cinema as an internationally acclaimed actress you were appointed as a core jury member at the 2013 edition of the khan film festival you were also awarded with the padma shri by the government of india in 2014 for your incredible contribution to indian cinema and with five film fair awards which are verily the indian oscars we salute you for uplifting womanhood in a male dominated industry and for all the inspirational protagonists that you have essayed with aplomb and originality for your role in reviving the feminine regard in the indian film fraternity and for your brilliant portrayal of some of the most magnificent women characters the all ladies league at the women economic forum is proud to confer on you with your balance the award for the iconic woman of the decade for excellence in empowering women being here with us coming all the way uh, as i said uh, uh, she really deeply supports the cause of connecting women all over the world and that's why she made it all the way to be here with all of you who are all on your way back tomorrow onwards and to carry this very sweet memory and an inspiring and engaging session with one of the most fascinating women not just of the indian industry but of india herself thank you i couldn't have given my mother a better mother's day gift truly <laughs>